In this video, I'm going to explain to you what the words red shade or green shade mean when you find them written on a color name on the side of your tube. Now, if you don't know what they mean at all, or perhaps you kind of understand, but you don't really know how that should inform your buying choices or your color mixing choices, keep watching. I'm going to explain it in a really simple way and all will become perfectly clear. So we're going to swatch some colors in a moment. I'm going to explain exactly what red shade and green shade mean. But first of all, let's talk about the word shade, because when I've spoken about this subject in other videos, I get a lot of troll comments and I get a specific type of troll comment from people that we're going to call pedants because they're pedantic and it's a word that I can use on YouTube without getting into trouble. And the problem is this, that the dictionary definition of the word shade and the way that people in common parlance and manufacturers use the word shade are not the same. So if you look up the word shade in the dictionary, you'll see that it relates to levels of light and dark, tones if you will. People don't always use it in that way. Of course, you may say a darker shade or a lighter shade, but you're more likely to say to someone, oh, I love that shade of pink on you. What you actually mean is the color. You're talking about the hue. Nobody says to their friend, I love that hue of pink on you. We say, I love that shade of pink. And the manufacturers use it in a similar way. They're talking about color. Now you can come into the comments all day long and say to me, well, the word shade doesn't mean that. I've looked it up in the dictionary. It doesn't make any difference. I'm explaining to you how the manufacturers use it on the tubes of paint. What I'm really saying here is don't shoot the messenger. It's not my fault. So now we've got to grips with the fact that the manufacturers are using the word shade in order to indicate a color bias. Let's get on and point the camera downwards and swatch some colors so I can explain the difference between red shade and green shade. Later on in the video, I'll be explaining exactly what this means in terms of color selection and color mixing. So don't forget to watch until the end. So I've got some colors here. I've got some cobalt blue, a little bit of lemon yellow and some pyrrole red. Now the colors that you'll most likely see red shade and green shade written on are the blues, in particular phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Now it's not only the blues where they sometimes use these terms. I'll explain more about that later on, but let's start with the blue. So I'm gonna take this cobalt blue here and show you how it relates to the primary colors and the direction that it can lean in. So a blue can have a primary value of warm or cool, and blue is a cool, but then it can have kind of a secondary leaning. In other words, within the blues, there can be cooler or warmer blues. So all blues are cool, but they can lean slightly warmer or slightly cooler. So let's swatch a bit of this blue on the paper. So here's my blue, and it sits with its other primary colors of yellow and red. Now, what happens if I take my blue and mix the tiniest amount of red into it? So let's make this one happen. So I'm just gonna mix them on the paper. So we'll take our blue and we'll pop a tiny amount of red in it. So we're not looking to change it, it's still going to be a blue, but it's gonna start leaning slightly purplish. Of course, if I kept adding red, then it would go all the way to becoming purple, but we're just gonna add a little bit. And then we're gonna do the same with the yellow. So again, starting with the blue and adding the tiniest bit of yellow. And we've just changed this blue slightly. So over here, we've got a blue that leans a little bit towards purple because we've added red. And over here, we've got a blue that leans a little bit towards green or turquoise because we've added yellow. So when a manufacturer talks about a red shade of blue, what it's talking about is a blue that leans more towards the red end of the spectrum. And when it talks about a green shade, it's talking about a blue that leans more towards the yellow end of the spectrum. Now, why don't they just call it yellow shade? Now, there's various reasons for that. The main one is that although manufacturers may not be using the word shade correctly, they are essentially chemists and they are mixing chemicals. Now, when it comes to science, yellow is not a primary color. Green is your third primary color. Now, the reason artists use yellow as our primary color is because we can't take green and extract separately the yellow and the blue light from it. Now, scientists working with light and with pigments can do this, but an artist can't. So therefore, it makes more sense for artists to start with yellow as our primary. But when it comes to science, green is the third primary. This is why they describe this as a red shade and this as a green shade. And if you find it hard to remember, just remember that if you add yellow to blue, you're going to get 
green. Now in a moment, I'm going to swatch some pre-mixed green shades and red shades next to each other so you can see the difference and the differences will be subtle. Now, as I said, mostly when you see red shade and green shade, it will be on a tube of blue paint, but it's not only on blues. Next up, I'm going to swatch a different color entirely. I'm also going to swatch some ultramarines and some phthalos from ready mix tubes of red shade and green shade next to each other so that you can see the differences. You'll see how subtle those differences are, but they really do make a difference when it comes to color mixing and I'm going to explain why. If you are enjoying this video, can I ask you to do me a quick favor? Can you please click that like button, that thumbs up button? If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment here on YouTube, all of these things are free. It will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw. So we're going to move away from blues for a moment. We're going to look at these oranges because I have an orange red shade. Now it's important to note that just because a manufacturer doesn't label a color as red shade or green shade, doesn't mean that it doesn't lean in a certain direction. Quite often manufacturers use these terms when they have more than one version in their color range. For instance, they might have three ultramarines. One might be a red shade, one might be a green shade, and one might be an ultramarine deep. So let's swatch some oranges here. So this is a Talons Rembrandt Permanent Orange. Here it is, lovely bright orange, a traditional orange such as you might see on the actual fruit. But here we have a Windsor and Newton Orange Red Shade. And look at the difference you can see. It's much more coral, it's much more peachy. It definitely tends much more towards the red end of the spectrum. So you might be asking yourself, could I just take this cooler orange and just dump a load of red in it and get a warmer orange like this one? Well, yes and no, certainly you could warm this orange up. This is a cadmium orange, which means it's going to be slightly opaque. And I haven't checked the pigments, but it's likely that the pigment is a cooler yellow. If I want to mix a really good bright sunset orange like this one, I'm going to want to start from a warmer yellow, not muddy it up with cool green leaning lemon. So in other words, if you just dump a bit of scarlet red in this color here, certainly it will become warmer, but it may not be quite as vibrant as this one here because the pigments that you start with matter, not only the color, the hue of them, but also the properties such as opacity and granulation. And so it's not always as easy as just adjusting your own colors. Now let's swatch some actual pre-made red and green shades next to each other. So here I've got one of my favorite colors. This is a Jackman's Art Materials Ultramarine Green Shade. I'm pretty much addicted to this color. It's an amazing color. So here it is. You can see it still looks like a traditional ultramarine. It's very bright and clear. Now let's contrast it with this French ultramarine. Now just to confuse things, French ultramarine is a warmer ultramarine, so they don't always label the ultramarine red shade. Sometimes it's called French ultramarine. This one will be leaning slightly more towards the purple end of the spectrum. It will also be more granular because we're working with natural pigments here and the further into the red shade you go in terms of ultramarine, not in terms of all pigments, the more granulation you're going to get. And let's swatch some phthalos. So here we have a traditional phthalo blue. And let's look at the phthalo blue green shade, which we would expect to be much closer towards the turquoise end of the spectrum. And we can see that it is. So you might be looking at these colors, especially when we're dealing with light levels and you're watching it through a screen and it's gone through several processes to be made into a video. You may be thinking to yourself, well, there's not an awful lot of difference between them. Does it really matter? And the answer is it matters when it matters. So if you're a complete beginner and you just need an ultramarine, really don't concern yourself too much with whether or not that's a warm ultramarine or a slightly cooler ultramarine. But if you're getting a bit more advanced and you want to get into color mixing, then this stuff can be quite important. When it comes to ultramarine, for example, ultramarine already leans to the warm end of the spectrum. It's quite a warm blue. It's got quite a bit of red in it. Now, if you want to mix a green from it, you're going to get a fairly dull green. And the reason for that is because you're taking yellow and blue. And then you've got a little bit of that third color that's already in the blue. A little bit of that red is going to push that green more towards neutral, which is why you never get the brightest greens from ultramarine. So it's important to understand that if you want to mix a green from ultramarine, 
you're going to get a brighter green if you go with a purer, greener shade than you are if you go with a red shade. Now that's not to say that the green shade is better than the red shade or the other way round. For example, if you're mixing a purple, then you'd be much better off with the red shade because you're already leaning a bit more towards purple. So you're going to get a more beautiful, more effective purple without getting a little bit of that third primary, that yellow leaning in from the green shade. If we go back to our oranges, if you want to paint an actual fruit, an actual orange, then you're going to be better with this cool shade. But what about if you want to paint a sunset then this one here is going to be much more suitable for you because it's much warmer so the main reason to concern yourself with whether a paint is a green shade or a red shade is really a matter of what you want to use that color for and when it comes to color mixing you're always going to get a better result if you choose base colors that lean towards the colors that you are looking to make for example if you try and make a purple from a green shade phthalo like this and a bright scarlet red you're going to get a very mucky purple indeed. If you start with a warm French or red shade ultramarine and you add something like a really strong pink, you're going to get a beautiful, strong, clear purple. Don't worry if you struggle to remember this information as long as you have a vague idea of what green shade and red shade means and you make yourself some color charts so you can see what your colors actually mix when they're mixed with other colors. You'll be well on the way to improving the way you choose your colors and the way you mix them. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolor painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.